Welcome to Niagara College in Niagara-on-the-Lake, where the opportunity to quench your thirst for knowledge and beer are simultaneously satisfied at Canada's first teaching brewery. Niagara College's world-class brewmaster facility doesn't simply produce award-winning beer, but outpours brewmaster chiefs who've revolutionized the Canadian craft beer world for the better. And today, three Padawans join their beer evolution. Yes, the trailblazers of the Ale Trail are headed back to school, where they can personally thank the folks responsible for so many happy mouths and dad bods. This is Tales from the Ale Trail, Niagara College. Hi, right, today, Chris. Uh, well, I just, I, I don't know what tie to wear, the polka dot one or the, or the black one? The black one. Really? You like it? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot because you're wearing it. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's just important to me on the first day of school to, to make a good impression. You know what makes a good impression? Being on time. I'm going to be on time. Me too. My name is Craig Udell. I'm the Dean of the Canadian Food and Wine Institute. And we're here at Niagara College, which is on the Niagara on the Lake campus. It's a fantastic spot to come because it always changes too. Students are always making new beers, always something new on the horizon. And hey, what better place to have a beer spot than right on campus? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Welcome to the Teaching Brewery. One of the first things we teach our students in here is safety, and that means no loose or dangling clothing. So if you guys would like to follow me, I've got some shirts for you to wear, ready for your first lesson. Hey, you look like Colonel Sanders. Where's Drew? Hey. So you guys look like you're ready for class today. We had a little safety chat earlier. <laughs> now we're gonna get into how the equipment works. We basically do a brew on the pilot side over here. This is our small batch system. We make 50 liters of beer at a time. The tanks behind you actually hold about 100 to 120 liters. So we'll make two brews to go into the one tank. When the wort, which comes out of these brew systems, goes into there, we pitch a yeast. That yeast creates alcohol and carbon dioxide. That bubbling sound you can hear in the background, that is the yeast at work. Hard at work doing our job for us, turning the sweet, sugary wort into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Sounds like my baths after some Mexican food. <laughs> We really sort of started right when the craft beer was taken off in Ontario. Right up to today, we have 100% placement for our students, and they really look to us to help them and support them. Cheers. 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 Cool. I got to say, have you ever gone to like a barbecue and you just had the small hot dogs, and then all you had was uh, sausage buns? That's what I feel like right now, standing <laughs> between you guys. Oh. I was wondering where he was going yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> You're a favorite wiener. Thanks. <laughs> do you do this in class often, just have beers? Normally at the end of the day, if we've created something new or trying want to taste some new beers, or graduates come in with one of his products, we'll sit back and relax and enjoy one of them. So you must be really pushing to create new beers all the time. Last year we did about 350 different brews in this brewery. <laughs> so nearly one a day. That's our, that's our goal, is to try and do one beer a day. And it's so amazing for the student experience that they get to be involved in these Anything like that. Anytime projects. I can come up with neat ideas and fun things for them to do. And we develop products along the way for ourselves as well. And the Cherry Pilsner is one of those. We wanted to showcase Niagara products. We wanted to showcase what we do here in the brewery. So the cherry juice that we use in this comes from Cherry Lane in Vineland and uh, it gives that little bit of sweetness, that little touch of cherry to the otherwise standard Pilsner that we sell as well. The cherry really cuts the uh, typical bitterness that I expect in a Pilsner. It's, it's, a, it's a unique combo, I find. It is, and it's one of the two products we still put in bottles. Everything else is in cans now, but we find because the cherry has got that cachet to it, just like the Butler's Bitter, it's got that nice label on it, those two products we still do exclusively in bottles. So you said the Butler's Bitter comes in a bottle too. It does. Would you like to try that next? Uh, sure, why not? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our Butler's Bitter is unbelievable. It started off as a, a singular project based around the War of 1812 recreations and our brewmaster John Downing wanted to create a, 
a beer that was really reminiscent of what the British soldiers were actually drinking back then and really wanted to make something authentic. This thing is our most awarded beer, and it really started off as a one-off project, and now we literally can't make it fast enough. Oh, cheers. cheers. I love Thank this you. beer. Thank you. Yes, this is a wonderful beer. So it's actually a book that was written in 1815 called The Practical Brewer. It was published in New York City just at the end of the war. So it was from the American point of view, and they were describing this type of beer and how they were making it. Obviously, the malts are different and the hops are different, so it's a modern version of that. But you still have that, that essence of history in it, too, which yeah. is pretty cool. For sure. And if you go to any English pub, this will be the style of beer you'll have on draft pulled out of the beer engine. That's exactly what I picture when I drink something like this. What's amazing about this beer is that all the medals that it's won, it's never been created by the same students. The fact that they're able to create this world-class beer consistently all the time, to me, is unbelievable. And in an educational world, that's, uh, that's really something to hang your hat on. And how long am I in the program before I'm being I'm involved in the day 101 booth? Day one. If, so if you told me, hey, you're going to start this program, day one, you're going to be working on this award-winning beer. I'm gonna be a little nervous. What are the what are the nerves like with with the students coming into like where you're like, okay, don't screw this up because we got a good thing going here. For that, for the reason we don't say that. We we show them the equipment, we show them how it's done. Right. We'll take them through one thing, thing. You gotta get this grain together. You gotta to look at this recipe. You have to get the water into here. And so they're too busy focusing on that individual part of the project that they're doing that they don't think about, oh my god, somebody's gonna be drinking this in three weeks' time. I remember the first time I had this. This sounds so negative, but it, it just with it being student brew. I was like, oh, like it's it's gonna be like still some miles to go. Shame on you. It, it is. Yeah, it's really. like, but you you have that perception we when do it get comes that to a lot. student made or student run. But then I had the butlers and it was perfect. It was uh, it was exactly what you want in a bitter. The brewing program has been amazing. People come right out of the program. They're, they're so well trained and so excited and passionate. We can point to dozens of people in the industry right here in Ontario that are leading the charge. We got students from all the coasts of Canada out on Vancouver Island, up in Iqaluit, and in Newfoundland. We even have one down south off the Southern American coast. Wow. So we've basically got the whole continent covered and surrounded. I want to travel with you because I bet you drink free at like every brewery, so. <laughs> well, that's my retirement plan. You know, all these graduates will be out there opening breweries. And then when I retire, I'll be able to travel around and, you know, see what they're up to. I'd love to try one more. Well, we'll take a step up from this and we'll go to our IPA. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, guys. The old uh, IPA here. It's got a little bit more kick to it, more hops, a little bit less malt but more alcohol as well. And what's really cool about this is that we use our own hops. So hops that are oh. grown 150 feet from this brewery, from the back door, they're in this beer. And what, wow. what kind of hops are you growing? Uh, we have 12 different varieties out there. Uh, for this one, we use Cascades, which gives it a nice little citrusy touch yeah. mm -hmm. and really, really great earthy character and mm -hmm. flavor. I feel like a sharp bitterness, and it kind of stays right through to the exactly. end. Exactly, but it's yeah. very clean, very clean. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's got smooth. You know, tasting beer is so personal. Right. It comes down to your palate and where that beer is made and who made it, you know, what hops went into it, what farm they came from. This one's definitely got like that orange citrus, but mixed with that earthiness, it was really nice. John and the team have set a standard that is not just school standard, it's uh, world-class standard. So whether we're making beer, wine, um, uh, distillates, uh, or of course our food, it's that same bar. I say we're pretty well-versed. We've done the beer program, I assume. Yeah. You have, you've graduated with honors. All Wonderful. Right. Perfect. Next step is distillery. There we go. To the distillery. Well, the distilling program was sort of an obvious next step. But it's a little higher level. It's got some really cool, interesting aspects to it. We also know that artisan distilling is starting to take off in our region. This smells delightful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. What you're trying here today is the first batch of gin created by the Niagara College teaching program. The students were actually able to get their opportunity to adjust and, and tweak the recipe uh, after the distillation process, so their opinions and ideas actually went into this as well as their labor. Fantastic. Awesome. This one's got floral notes. It's definitely got a spiciness to it. What direction did you go? One of the reasons that gin is becoming so popular is the world is your oyster when it comes to the type of flavor you can create. So I tried to go a little bit more in between a couple different styles. Okay. So you'll notice that it's a little more botanical forward. It's got a little bit more going on, but it's also not wild and crazy. You could use this in a typical cocktail, but you can also you kind of you can drink it on its own. You can drink it on its own. <laughs> this is this is amazing. Really good. Like you're not a huge spirits fan usually, no, but yours no. is done. This, yeah, it's it's gone. Do you kind of predict like that we're gonna see these distillers pop up? Yeah, we're gonna see a similar kind of takeoff to craft brewing. It is a little harder to to get a, a distillery up and going. Well, yeah, like if you're making a whiskey, 
Yeah. You have to have patience. And also, the science behind it to know that, hey, if we put this away, yeah. and we wait maybe two decades, it'll be phenomenal. Yeah, we'll finally be able to sell it 20 years from now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. And you have to have the, the resources to be able to survive that long, yes. too, so you Absolutely. can still be around to put your mark on it. We see a lot of other spirits kind of crop up in the meantime. So gin is one of those very popular spirits because it puts the distiller stamp. It's a unique flavor in a short period of time while you're putting away barrels. Knowing the impact of the craft brew program, I'm really excited to see what this teaching distillery program will have to offer Ontario and Canada. We, we certainly are as well, so. <laughs> I would, cheers to that, but I don't know if anyone has anything like. left. <laughs> At Penn Financial, we give all our members the VIP treatment. Oh, please, allow me. That means access to expert advice regardless of their bank balance. Do have another one? Welcome to Benchmark, gentlemen, here at Niagara College. Today we have a bit of a tasting exercise. For... You mean competition? I mean exercise. We're going to be giving you three dishes made right here at the restaurant, each paired with two different beers made right here at our teaching brewery. And you're each going to pick which beer you like best with each dish. Hmm. Well, I'm going to crush you. You come to the restaurant and we're growing our own lettuce, growing our own herbs, growing tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. We call it Disneyland for food and wine. You can come here, everything is here. You see everything growing, you see everything being produced. It's kind of cool because you can go and try all these things and know in the back of your head that this is a student making this. This is done by someone learning the process. All right, fellas, so what I'd recommend we do is start with the beer. The reason why is that the food can actually change how you perceive it on your palate. If you've ever had orange juice after brushing your teeth, that's an extreme example of that. So in this dish, you have both beets and bitter greens. The earthiness of the beets may pair well with some of the earthy qualities of the English hops in these beers. The bitterness of the hops, of course, may pair or clash with the bitterness of the greens. <laughs> So let's start with the Bitter 101. I really like this bitter. Oh, that's nice. Rich in flavor, yes. caramelly. I didn't make it, but I'll take the compliment. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so now try the strong. Try okay. the strong, which you, I think you'll find is stronger. Oh. Not just in alcohol, but flavor. It looks so beautiful, too. I love the reddish hue to it. Yeah, this is stronger for sure. It's got like a, like a cherry kind of Dark fruit, vibe to it. more malty. Yeah. On the count of one, two, three. You can't pick both. What, no? That's cheating. Oh, I got confused. Well, you're eliminated. Just, Sorry, just, put that down. just put one. Well, oh, no. So you think I, the strong drink? I think the strong too. I think the strong. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going with yeah. the strong's and a bitter. Hmm. Big piece of beet there. Mm. I try and get a little bit of everything. Yeah, I think I got the, the full gambit here. You lose a lot of the bitterness yes. in the bitter. And it's just, it's, it's very smooth. Mm. I actually think it evened strong. out the earthy and the bitter, and especially uh, with the goat cheese, it really smoothed and mellowed it out. I would change my I, vote and yeah. probably go go the bitter route. Oh. I, I would actually agree with Drew. I found that it actually brought out some of the bitterness to the to the strong beer, and it, it felt a little, I don't know how else to say it, but felt a little more strong after eating this. So would you say, guys, that uh, three for three thinks the English bitter would be the best pairing? Yep. Yeah. I Wonderful. put a big check mark beside that. Yeah, it's good. Good thing this isn't a competition. No, no. <laughs> Which one would you pick, you think? Without having tried the salad, I would go for another beer. You know, we have such an incredible level of excellence that all the professors work to that they're really able to create amazing stuff. So when you come here, it's not just beer, it's excellent beer. It's not just wine, it's world-class wine. It's not just a burger, it's an amazing burger. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, fries like that with like the mayo. Thank you. Looks incredible. This time we have a Vienna lager and a Pilsner. Two classic styles, one again more malty than the other. Wow, that is just clean and fresh. Yeah, it's clean. It doesn't have like mm -hmm. um, an overwhelming earthiness like some some craft pilsners can get. Totally, this one it almost has a sweetness. Your dad would oh, love this. Oh yeah, beer. he would love this. This is what he calls a, a beer with gravity. The Vienna is made with Vienna malt, which is not as robust or heavy as Munich. This almost has like a nutty nuttiness to it. 
too. Mm. Yeah, dry finish, very little bitterness too to that. I love this one. It's... Bright and refreshing. They both should go well with a burger, but now you gotta choose. And one, two, three. Oh. Ooh, two Vienna, one pills. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh. All right, let's, the burger. Let's give it again. a shot. Yeah. I'm already liking my choice with the Vienna. Because the burger does have that that sweetness. I don't know if it's a chutney in there or the, the mm -hmm. something going on with the onions there, but it really complements that sweetness. Oh, wow. With with the Pilsner, it, you you lose a bit too much of the, the flavor of the Pilsner. The Vienna almost seems like it was made for this burger. Or the burger was made for the beer. The Pilsner almost cuts over top of the burger flavors, whereas the Vienna, kind of blends melts. it together. Yeah, it melts really nicely. It's not fighting. For me, I would have to choose a beer that went with the entire dish, right? So right. I'm actually gonna stick with my original choice, it's the Pilsner. I'm gonna stick with my Vienna choice for the, the meal as a mm -hmm. whole. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Well, that's one of the great things about doing these pairing exercises. It's not a competition. So but, you know, but who's right? Would Nick and Drew be right, or would I be right? I feel like you chose the Pilsner because you chose the Pilsner. No, the Pilsner was the choice that I wanted to go with, Nick, and perhaps the professional who is a teacher here at Niagara College perhaps would have an answer that would either confirm or deny that. So it, who would be who would be correct? If you love Pilsner, nothing wrong with that, I love Pilsner too, and that's just what you want to have with a meal, then that is absolutely the right pairing for you. <laughs> There's not a wrong answer. But there's a more right answer. There's a more right answer for you. All right, gentlemen, the final oh. course, everyone's favorite, dessert. I hope you saved room for this beautiful cheesecake. You've got a porter and a stout, two very similar beers. Give them a try and give me your prediction on what you think will pair better with your cheesecake. That's like dessert in a glass already. Yeah, it already is. Chocolatey is. coffee notes. Yeah. Yes, roasted. If I was on death row, this would literally be my final meal. It's like, here's a porter, here's a stout, here's a cheesecake, and you just had a burger. It, it, yeah. I definitely find there's more, a little more bitterness with the porter. I got smokiness and more biting with the stout. They're both good beers. Mm -hmm. They're very good beers. Okay, ready? Yeah, All ready? right. One, two, three. Oh! Look at that. There we go. Unanimous. We can all be wrong. I feel like a swarm of butterflies are gonna attack me while I'm yeah. eating this. I'm like, is the flower edible? Can I eat that? They are edible orchids, I believe. The cheesecake is phenomenal. It's it's light, fluffy. It's not like a heavy cheesecake. Pairing this with the porter really brings out all the strawberry flavors a lot. You know what though? Yeah. I'm I'm gonna change my answer. All I taste in the porter now is is that the smoky, roasty stuff but more on the bitter side where, where the stout has a smoother kind of finish for me when paired with the cake. I was almost 100% sure this was gonna be the better pairing, but it's definitely a much more difficult decision. You get a lot more sweetness that. out of the stout, mm -hmm. I find. The stout brings out a black cherry quality in the, the strawberry yeah, the contrast cheese. of the stout is nice. Mm -hmm. Which is really lovely. It's, it's like good, it, right? It almost turns it into a black forest cake. Similar to coffee with dessert, those dark, roasty flavors can really pair well with something like this decadent cheesecake. Yeah, I'm gonna say that the stout definitely pairs better with the flour. Um, the flour. Did you try the flour? Really, yeah, I did. It has a very earthy taste to it. A very yeah. floral character. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> yeah, that's a oh. keen observation. <laughs> yeah. You're the professional, yes. right? Oh, you said that was edible? That was not, oh. What, you didn't like it? I'm, I'm noticing something here on Chris's lap, though. <laughs> oh, you didn't even eat it. It That is not, I think anything pairs well with that flour because, oh my gosh, it's awful. <laughs> you ate the whole thing, though. I just ate the leaves. Uh, uh. This is a great cake, though. Oh, this is so amazing. I will agree with you, Drew. I I think the stout paired nicely with it. Yeah, I agree with you. You were wrong. Too. Uh, we were all wrong. I think you there were also right wrong. wrong. So. Yeah, but I was the first one to change my book. Right, but you were still wrong with your initial but assessment. But I was the first one to be right. But there really isn't a wrong answer here, guys. As right. long as you're enjoying these pairings. Someone right. has to win. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, an educational institution. I would assume you would assign a grade. Guys, it's obvious who is the best taste, and you're welcome. So who won the vote? <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Drew. Because he's not complaining about who's winning. What? Yeah, Thanks. why not? Hey, no problem. Did you steal his flower? 
I sold his chocolate. Uh, there's chocolate? My pick of the show is the 1812 Butler's Bitter. It's gonna make my butler bitter because I'm gonna keep asking him to bring me some of this. My pick of the show is the Brewmaster Cherry Pilsner. It's everything but the pits. My beer pick of the show is the IPA 101. Sharp bitterness, sweet malt backbone, and a lasting hoppy finish. Yeah, it says that right on the back of the can, but whoever said that was, was pretty bang on. We want to be a center for agri-food excellence. This is where we want everyone to come, not only to educate themselves, but to do research, to develop new ideas and concepts, to really see where agri-food in Canada can go. We want to make sure we take the amazing people we have here, we want to share them with the world. Tales from the Ale Trail is created by Mitchell Riley Pictures and is brought to you by AE Media Inc., Web Design and Print Studio, Penn Financial Credit Union, Port Colburn, Taste the Good Life, Treshack Enterprises, Joel Hannigan Photography, William Joseph Photography, and Bell 5 TV One. Wardrobe provided by High Gravity Supply Company.